guys. The bad news just keeps coming. We're about to enter into a crisis that is just going to make the recession worse. Currently, Amazon.com is losing money. First time that Amazon lost money in seven years. Now, I don't think Amazon's gonna have layoffs because Amazon has 100% turnover rate. So what they're gonna do is, as people quit, they're just not gonna hire more people. That's how they're gonna solve their issue, which is gonna happen pretty quickly because I knew someone that worked for the Amazon and she lasted one week and she couldn't do it anymore. So let's go ahead and look at Walmart, Target, and Amazon. Now, what do these three companies have in common? They are the low cost provider of goods and services. Walmart being the biggest, Amazon being the second largest employer in America, and Target coming in third. This is where people go to save money. And Amazon's losing money, Walmart's losing money, and Target's losing money. So these three companies that cater to the slower socioeconomic class are losing money and they're in trouble. And I did some research and across the board, do you understand Netflix, Disney Plus, many of these streaming services are losing money. Netflix, Netflix, which was booming for years and years and years. So what does this mean? I'm going to give you a picture of what I think happened. And, you know, going back and echoing my sentiments of the death of the STEMI baller. You cannot flood the economy with a bunch of unearned money and not to expect to have repercussions. I had someone comment, stop making it seem like the American people got billions of dollars. They didn't get billions, they got trillions in enhanced unemployment and direct stimulus checks. The American people got trillions of dollars that they didn't have to do nothing for. And this is something one of my mentors told me years and years ago, and I've just found it to be true. Because typically when you start a business or you get yourself significant financial assets, there is a temptation to give someone power of attorney so they can conduct your affairs for you and you don't have to be bothered. And my mentor said, never ever do that. He said, when you give someone access to a bunch of money that they didn't earn, the temptation is going to be staggering. And I agree with that. I have a friend who actually, we had a similar friend who um, ignored his advice and he set up a company and he got power of attorney and these people robbed him of $7 million. So never ever, if you have money, allow someone else to sign checks or have access to your checking accounts. Like right now, there's something going on with Truist Bank and I, I have a feeling this is what happened. You have these business accounts that are beginning hacked and liquidated. I guarantee you in every case that these accounts got hacked, they were using that debit card. For the record, for me to you, if you have a business checking account with a ton of money in it, Never, ever use a debit card associated with that account. Don't, you just giving someone access to all your money. It's just, like I said, never, ever do it. Never, ever. And people continually do this stuff with these debit cards. And when bad things happen, they want the bank to give them all the money back. And the banks are like, um, we ain't giving you the money back. We're not giving the money back. So that was just a community public service announcement from me to you. Stop using these debit cards, especially with what's about to come. All right, so we have Amazon losing money, we have Walmart losing money, we have Target losing money. 
And we have a lot of companies, including Netflix, uh, Peloton, so many companies losing money. And this is going to begin the biggest wave of layoffs that we've ever seen. Now, the layoffs during the pandemic were forced layoffs. They were, you know, what's it? An unearned era. The people didn't do anything. The company didn't do anything. The government set that up. This time, we're going to see a massive wave of layoffs that are going to be staggering. It's just going to be staggering because this is what's coming. And this is going like what, what's going to happen. It's May, June, July, uh, the end of July. We're going to be formally announced that we're in the recession. And then these layoffs are going to kick up. Companies are going to start getting rid of people like crazy. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really, really bad. Um, you're going to see companies like let's take Tesla. I would not be surprised if Tesla the lays off people. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, right now, Tesla has been the Internet darling stock. You know, a lot of people ran options on Tesla. A lot of people made money with Tesla and Tesla's down 50% from its all time high. I mentioned this before. Elon Musk, in my opinion, did a rug pull when the stock price was like booming. He sold 20 billion of his stock. I'm surprised he didn't sell more. There was probably 20 billion was what he could get away with without crashing the stock. I think that was the only reason he didn't sell more. So what you're going to see, and this is something that's happening, especially in the tech sector, DoorDash doesn't make any money. I need to check, but I think Uber was making money. Now Uber isn't making money. Lyft isn't making money. A lot of these internet tech companies are not making money. They're fueled by investor speculation. And during this period that's about to come, once we slide into this recession, once real marketplace fundamentals start to enter the room, we're gonna see a lot of these companies gonna be in trouble because like, all right, why Amazon, Walmart and Target, why are they losing money? Because their customer base doesn't have money. How long do you think that these investors are gonna be able to plow billions of dollars into these companies that are not making money? At some point, at some point in the future, they're not gonna have the money to invest in these companies. Uh, I was watching a YouTuber who does drop shipping and I'm gonna give you the fundamentals of his business. It cost him $90,000 in cost, marketing cost and cost of goods to make a $10,000 profit, okay? What I know about business, that is unsustainable. You never wanna be in a situation where you've gotta spend that much money to elk out a profit. At a bare minimum, if your business isn't doing 20% profit, you are walking dead. And ideally, you wanna be at the 50% profit. You wanna be at the 50% profit because this gives you enough money to weather unforeseen future events. But I was looking at it and uh, I got a video on the uh, Glendon Cameron School talking about that. And one of the things that I feel is we're about to have a great reckoning. All of the bad policy, especially with this looming diesel shortage crisis, that is a byproduct of bad policy. We allowed seven of 14, we only had 14 oil refineries and we allowed seven to close. That didn't happen by accident. So one of the things where America's going wrong is we're not about producing, manufacturing, building. We're not doing that anymore. We're just not. And this is one of the things that's gonna catch up with us because let's have this conversation. 
why is the middle class so fragile and why is the so-called middle class priced out of home ownership, higher education, having a decent life? In the 70s, America got rid of manufacturing. We used to be the biggest manufacturer on the planet. In 1950s, the second world's largest second economy behind the United States was Detroit. And we just got away from that. Right now we've become a very much uh, a rent seeking nation. How can I make a bunch of money without doing nothing? This is the modus operandi. And this is one of the things that's gonna happen because like I said, Amazon, I don't think Amazon's gonna do layoffs because they have a uh, high uh, turnover rate and they're just gonna let people quit and they're just not gonna hire them back. But I suspect that Walmart and Target will do layoffs or they will have an early retirement plan. There, there are many ways to do this. A company may like, hey, you can retire because that's probably where they're gonna start because those funds for retirement and severance packages come from different operating accounts and they don't come from the main budget. So I figure Walmart, Target, is gonna have some early retirement options. You're gonna see this as a big, big thing because this is something else. I was doing some research. In the Great Resignation, someone was talking about that 70% of the people who quit their job actually regretted it, which means that people were not deeply contemplating changes jobs. They just quit because everyone else was doing it. I'll tell you a story. And it, it, it fits very well with the great resignation. I used to work in the hospital and me and the workers, we were, me and my fellow coworkers, we're, we're unhappy with working conditions. And every day it was a complaining fest and we are talking about it. And everyone's like, hey, I'm getting another job, I'm getting another job, I'm getting another job. You know what I did? I actually found another job and turned in my two weeks notice. I was the only one to do it. They was like, oh man, you know, get another job. That's kind of hard. I only reason I did that is because of the community that I was in. I didn't do it because I was very unhappy. I just did it because it was the environment. I was stupid. And eventually I ended up quitting the other job and coming back after the riffraff had left. So I feel that a lot of people who got caught up in this great resignation, because I've seen a multitude of videos um, on YouTube talking about, I resigned my job. You know, there was this uh, real estate rookie podcast where this guy quit his job with no savings, no income, which I think is patently stupid. I think it's patently stupid to quit your job without a safety net. Because even if you got money saved, money saved with no money coming in, spend so quickly. And this is something else that I had talked about, that a lot of people who are quitting these jobs, because once these massive layoffs start, a lot of people are gonna wish they had those jobs. All this complaining, because see, when you're sitting at home, the refrigerator's empty, there's no money in your bank account. You're gonna be wishing for that job that you despised 24 months ago. You will be wishing, you will be begging, you will be, because here, here's the thing. I was doing some thinking and calculations and crunching some numbers and the average person doesn't have a fundamental understanding of money and how money impacts their lives. I'll give you an example. I know someone who was very, very unhappy living here in Atlanta. And they decided to move to Texas. And I was like, okay. And they get to Texas and it's a complete shit show. Cannot find a job. Miserable. <clears throat> this person says, I don't fit in, I'm not dating all these people country. And this is what happens when you become 
dissatisfied. Like, you know, a lot of people hit me up like, why do you live in Atlanta? It's horrible. Living in Atlanta, where I live, like, um, don't know if I'm gonna stay here because I like the building, but I'm not fond of the environment. Uh, frequently, I find myself back in Sandy Springs because that's an environment I jive with. I don't see the things I see out here. And literally, it's eight minutes away. So I don't know what I'm gonna do here because of this environment. Um, but one of the reasons that I have been able to be happy in Atlanta and so many people like, I can't live in Atlanta, the people, blah, blah. You don't control your environment. See, what a lot of people are about to recognize and wake up to is they have no control of their environment. Once these massive waves of layoffs start, you know, you're going to be going to work, you're going to kiss your wife on the cheek, you're going to pat your kid on the head and you're going to get in your car and you're going to go to work. As soon as you get to work, it's going to be like, Carl, we need to see you in the conference room. And you go go in there and there's going to be three people there. And they're going to have folders on the desk and the folder like, well, this is your severance package and you will get medical for 60 days. And you're going to be like, what? And then you're going to go home and then you're going to find out that not only did you not control your environment, you don't even know how to create an environment that you can control. And this is, you know, I'm speaking high level concepts. This isn't something that the average person is going to figure out or Google. It's not. And you're about to realize just how vulnerable you are. Like I said, um, right now, this year is about me cleaning up messes, right? I'm getting, you know, I'm down to, I had 31 cars. I'm down to, I think 12 and next month I'm going to slash some prices and try to move some more. So right now I am in cleanup mode, but I am still operating in an environment that I control. Now, how do you control your environment? Because we're getting ready to start doing some lessons, some recession classes. And I'm about to give you some clues that's going to help you weather these storms. Number one, get rid of all bad debt. Now, what is bad debt? Credit card debt, consumer debt, car loan debt. If you have debt that's on an asset that produces a sizable return. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you went out and got you a mortgage on a second house that you're renting out. Let's say your mortgage is $2,000 a month and you're able to rent the house out for $2,000 a month. That is an example of bad debt because yeah, you got the house, you're controlling the real estate. Maybe it would be an equity play but you're not making any monthly income. That's to me would be bad debt. Now, let's say you get ahead and get you a second house, you get a mortgage on it, your mortgage is 1100 and you can rent this house out for 2000. Okay, that's an example of good debt. What makes debt good or bad is the return. If there's no return on your debt, it is dumb, stupid debt. And this is one of the things that is killing Americans, killing Americans, having a bunch of dumb, stupid debt, having a bunch of debt that like, I'm gonna be straight up. I don't know how some of y'all sleep at night. You got student loan debt. You got two car payments. You've got a car payment for you, car payment for your wife. You got credit card payments. You got a mortgage and all of your money that comes in is instantly spoken for. I don't know how y'all live. I could not live like that. I could not live like that. And what's going to happen once this massive wave of layoffs happen, a lot of people are going to be exposed. 
lot of people are going to be exposed because there's no delayed gratification. There's no future planning. Like, you know, I've, I've put it out here and I've talked about it and alert Glendon's about to start bragging. I, I got, I'm, I got to say something about that. I can live easily the rest of this year and not have another dime come in easily next few years. And this is something, a quote that I got from Michael Jordan via Alan Roger Curry. It's not bragging if you're commenting on something you've already done. It's bragging if you're commenting, commenting on something you haven't done. And to the moist men who love to watch this channel and get triggered every time that I say that I've done something that is significant and better than you can do in your worthless, pathetic life, I got a message for you. Deal with it. Just deal with it. Because one of the things, and I'm not speaking to the nerd gang. Nerd gang is an intellectual group of people who get it. But the whole bragging, whenever I say I've done something, like the number of people who lost their mind because I was able to buy 31 cars cash, when it was going on, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand it because I live in an alternative universe. I live in a universe full of rich people. I live in a universe where the majority of my friends, if they wanted to buy a Porsche, they could buy a Porsche. If they wanted to buy me another house, they could buy me another house. So for me to say, hey, I just got a new Porsche, it was no big thing in my alternative universe. But when I spill off into broke dick Danny universe, where broke dick Danny cannot even conceive paying cash for one car, we start to run into some problems. We start to run into some situations. We start to run into um, an implosion. And I want to tell you something, and this is more the training I'm doing, is I got to teach you guys how to envision a positive future. I don't want it to be remarkable, strange, or different for you to conceive driving a car that's paid off, living in a house that's paid off. I am of the Dave Ramsey camp, and there are many people who are living on these financing. I, I saw this video today where one of the worst mistakes you can make is paying off your house because you should take the money and invest it in the market versus paying off your house. I'm about to say something. As a person who has owned stuff, you know, I had some houses that were paid off. As a person who has owned stuff, there's a certain peace, calm, and serenity that wraps itself around your life. And a lot of these people, because once again, this is going to be probably the roughest wealth transfer window. The next 10 years, we're going to see a staggering wealth transfer. And all of these people who are financing are going to be exposed because financing something works as long as your money comes in uninterrupted. But oops, wait a minute. You, you didn't pay off your house when you could have. Now you laid off. Now you have this obligation of a mortgage payment that you cannot make. And instead of paying off your house where you wouldn't have had to deal with this, you would just have to pay property taxes and homeowner insurance, which is much cheaper than a mortgage. Now you're at risk of losing your house. And now you got to liquidate your investments to save yourself. Oh yeah, you got to sell your investments for less than what you pay for them because the market's down. I, like I said, I'm with Dave Ramsey on this, but there are so many people who are addicted to financing that they cannot see any other way to do it. They're like I said, I don't know how some of y'all sleep at night. I couldn't like there was this one couple on YouTube 
$1.5 million in debt. Both of them, I think she went to law school. I think he went to law school. And they bought a house and they had car payments. That's insanity. That's insanity. I, I could not live like that. I couldn't live like that. And these people are living like that. And they are... Um, comfortable with having a bunch of debt. So in some future videos, we're gonna get into some programming. Like right now, for my income, because yeah, even though I'm not really pushing nothing, I still have income coming in. Um, my debt is minimum. Only debt I have is this one car that I bought and I'm waiting for the spring so I can sell it and get out of that. Um, I bought to rent it out because my plan was I would keep it if it didn't and I was like, okay, I don't even drive that car. So for me, that would be an example of bad debt. It's the only bad debt I have and I cannot wait to get rid of that debt. Get rid of it, move on and get it out of my life because this year is about me fixing the bad decisions that I made last year. It's literally going to take me, because, uh, you know, I foolishly thought I would be able to sell these cars in three months. <sighs> what I'm consistently finding out is people don't have money. Uh, someone will come to me, I had a car, I was asking 10000 and the person offered me six because that's all he had. So that's one of the things, and that's a grim reality that I'm coming to in this market that a lot of people just don't have any money. And um, I'm gonna sell these cars because what am I talking about? The Great Recession, the Great Recession is coming, the great layoffs, the fuel shortage. We're gonna have a back to back to back bad event that's just gonna make this recession much, much worse. And if you're a person sitting on a lot of debt and you have a job, you could be in the danger zone because you could lose that job. And once these jobs start disappearing, because right now unemployment is very low because there's jobs like jobs people don't want. I've noticed that many fast food restaurants, uh, anything that's a low wage job, they got issues with getting people to do these jobs because they're homosexuals. They, live with someone so they don't have to have a full-time job because they're not supporting themselves. So these people ain't working. And I feel during this great recession, uh, the great layoffs period, that a lot of these people, when it is, it's essentially people change because something happened. Most people don't change because they wake up one day and decide, I decide to make a change. There's a few people who do that, but the average person that changes has have to have something negative happens. And I feel that this, this 10 year window where we're gonna have massive wealth transfer, there will be a wealth transfer, and I'll, I'll talk about that in future videos. You're not gonna be able to take advantage of the wealth transfer with a $35,000 a year job. What's gonna happen if you're someone with a $35,000 a year job, you're gonna be exactly where you are today, 10 years in the future. You will, the wealth transfer will miss you. It will just miss you. So we will be talking about how to participate in the wealth transfer and there's some other stuff that's coming up. Because like I said, you know, uh, the content production has been slowed down because I'm dealing with these cars. I've been sick, I've had a lot of issues. And I got a question. And I'm gonna put this out here and I want you guys to answer this question in the comments. How many of you could take off one month, not one year, but one month and your life would be fine? How many of you can take one month off? Because uh, I got sick, I had some issues. Um, this month has been, I only saw my girlfriend once this month. That's how bad it was. And how many of you can take a month off, one month, 
not work, and I have no money coming in. And once again, because the way my stuff is set up, I still have money coming in. I mean, you can take one month off and your life will be fine. One month where you can do what you need to do because I feel fortunate and grateful that I can take the time I need to heal and my life doesn't fall apart. A great example of that is when I had the heart attack. I was in the hospital for weeks. I did not work for seven months. And then from that, I rebounded to have the best financial year of my life. See, one of the principles, and we gotta talk about this, and we gotta talk about this a lot, is you gotta get out of debt, man. You gotta stop spending all your money on this stupid debt. You got to, because that removes options from the table. It does, it just removes options from the table. So what we're gonna talk about, because like I said, we got the diesel shortage, we've got all of these companies, and I found it really interesting that Netflix was losing money. Netflix was a darling stock. Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, all of these streaming services are losing money. You wanna know why? Let me tell you why. A lot of people well, they will sign up for Netflix. What they would do is give their login credential to 10 of their, flan, 10 of their friends. So instead of Netflix having 10 subscribers, they got one, but they get the use of 10 subscribers from this one account. This is happening with Netflix. This is happening with Hulu. This is happening with Amazon Prime. People do that because everybody wants to ball out on your dime, right? And these companies are losing money. And one of the reasons they're losing money is there's too many options. Uh, the streaming market is flooded. There's, there's just too much. Because, you know, one of the things I found out, because I've been sick and I've been watching now a lot of Netflix, uh, I, re I started re-watching The House of Cards. A lot of this new content is crap. It's just not as engaging as Breaking Bad or The House of Cards. I, I started rewatching these because even though they're old, they're more engaging and better written than some of this new crap out here. But yeah, we're July 2022. They will officially declare that we're in the recession. And then the rest of the year, we're going to see massive layoffs. We're going to see a lot of funky stuff. And it's going to be bad for some people. Once again, for the people who are positioned to take advantage of the wealth transfer, they're gonna make money hand over fist. But for the people who are not positioned, they're gonna get crushed. They're gonna get crushed. 